practice makes perfect, probably the most annoying truth we hear as we start a new creative hobby. But I say it's only part true. Repetition certainly is part of the secret sauce of getting better at art, but I think it's only part of the recipe. Today, I'm making a case for repetition and speed. Let's dive in. Today, I am using a Stonehenge watercolor paper cold press from Legion Paper. And it's a nine by 13 block and I've divided it into equal rectangles. I'll be using my Art for Joy Sake palette and my half inch dagger. Just one brush, that's right. The idea today is really simple. We are going to paint 12 mini landscapes and we are going to do them in about 12 seconds or 12 strokes each. Yeah, don't freak out. It's a lot easier than it sounds. It's all about building confidence in your skills, in your brush strokes, without worrying about the end result. Because let me tell you right now, let's just get it out of the way. These landscapes probably aren't going to be very attractive, but it doesn't matter because these little landscapes being pretty and perfect is absolutely 100% not the point. So maybe you're wondering like, well, Christy, what's the point? If we're not making art that we think is pretty, like seriously, what's the point? The point of this exercise is threefold. Number one, you wanna get better and quicker and more instinctual when you use your brush. That's why you're using one brush today and that's why we're working quickly. You wanna see how much you can get out of one brush and how quickly. Number two, it's about approaching composition really instinctively and quickly, but in a small scale because your paper here, your 12 sections are tiny, so you don't have a lot of space to worry about. So you also don't have a lot of time to worry about the space, but the decisions that you make are that much more impactful in the small space. And number three, this is all about improving your brush handling skills. When you only have one stroke to make a mark that leaves an impression, you're gonna get really creative about how you use that brush. And you'll see later on, I kind of stretched the limits of what one stroke means. All right, getting into it, friends. I'm starting with a stroke across the horizon line and notice that one stroke is continuous. As long as your brush doesn't lift off the page, it counts as one stroke. All right, I'm going with kind of a Southwest vibe here and I'm about six strokes in and I've only got six more to go to make this look like some kind of a landscape. Here's another one. Look at that long blue stroke and instantly I have sky and I'm just gonna scrub it up, up, up and fill that sky. And honestly, right there you have a quick 12-ish second landscape that actually feels like a landscape. It's convincing, right? And then boom, you move on to the next one. A couple of tips as I move on through these 12 landscapes. Because friends, today isn't about me teaching you how to paint a landscape or to paint 12 landscapes. Today is teaching you how to go through an exercise that's going to make you better at painting future landscapes. So please don't worry about color mixing. I did a little bit of it here on my palette, but truly it's just because I'm wetting and wanting to use up the color that was already in my mixing trays. That's it. Just spray your palette down and use what's already there. Work quickly. These are 12 quick, 12 second landscapes. So I don't want you fussing and discussing over which landscape goes in what square and so on and all the things. I want you to just do it, go, get it done, move on to the next one. Think about the angle at which you're holding your brush. If your brush strokes and the marks that you're making start to get a little stale, maybe you're three landscapes in like I am here and you kind of feel like everything's starting to look the same, think about the angle of your brush. And if you're not using a dagger brush, who cares? But think about holding it perpendicular to the page, different angles to the page, different pressure. You've got one brush for this exercise and you need to make the most of it. You've only got 12 strokes for each of these little landscapes. So think about how one stroke is gonna bump into the other and possibly make a different texture, a different color. Just like in the sky I was painting here, it went from blue to peach and I let some of the blue run into the yellow and the yellow ran into the pink and so it gave me a, a sense of a lot more brush strokes than I actually used because I really focused on how the colors bumped into one another and what happened where the colors bumped. All right, friends, I'm going to zip it for now and let's just 
see how these landscapes evolve and be sure to watch for some tips on the screen as I go. But before I actually go, I can never make up my mind. Uh, am I coming? Am I going? Who knows? But friends, let me know. So far, do you think this is an exercise that will help you out? And if you do, can you share in the comments why? I think this would be an amazing conversation for our little community to have here. And maybe you have some other ideas for other landscape exercises that you could share as well that would help us out. So head on down to comments and let's get that conversation started. And while you're at it, you know what I'm going to ask. If you think this is cool, fun, valuable, all the things, go ahead and give this video a boop. That's a like. friends just coming back with a reminder at this point you may be inclined to try to evaluate the attractiveness of these little paintings please please promise me you're not going to do that to yourself. I found myself doing it. I was looking at these thinking, oh gosh, the first one was pretty successful, but the rest of these just look like a hot mess. But no, nope, nope, don't do it. This truly isn't about the end result. This is about getting comfortable with your composition and making fast decisions. This is about getting super comfortable with one brush and really becoming a master of the one brush. And so friends just completely ignore how the end result is affecting your mood and your judgment of how successful this exercise is. Just a little reminder for you. As we come to the final square, friends, I would love to know your questions. What is confusing? What do you feel 
is going to just trip you up when you try this on your own. Go ahead to comments and let us know. Maybe I will have an answer for you, but who knows? Maybe someone in the community will have a really cool answer for you because honestly, that happens a lot. And if you haven't already, go ahead and give this video a boop. That's a like, friends, and it really helps out my channel. Now, before you dive into your own 12 second, 12 brush stroke landscapes, you might want to take a look at how I tackled this with roses. And until next time, friends, I wish you a ton of happy 12 second, 12 brush stroke painting.